Hello, we're, we're um, going to do a little uh, revamp on this piece here. And the reason why is we had a, a, um, a miscanthus planted here for a long time, but unfortunately, inside in the body of the miscanthus, there was a vinca, vinca minor, and the vinca minor grew everywhere and it was taken over. So we ended up, the only thing we could do was take the whole lot out. Now, see, there is a knack if you have broad leaves grown in amongst grasses, ornamental grasses, you can do, you can actually use lawn weed killer, it would work the same way, it won't kill the grass, but we, we decided just to take the whole lot out. And also, it was a very bad piece of ground, I think it was a pathway here or something, we have the, the purple sycamore here, really good, really, really nice plant for big garden, really good. Much better than the, the purple Norway maple. It, the Norway maple is too intense, and that, that's much more subtle in this, in this purpleness. And then we have uh, black pine over there. Soil's not brilliant. So, we have the hedge as well. So, we, the only, it's, it's improved. In the sense that a lot of organic matter has has uh, come there in its own bath. So, it's a fair bit of organic matter. So, we want to get all that in. So, we will have to dig it. And it's that, it's that bad. It's that, that we have to use a pickaxe. So, we'll, um, we'll go through that with the pickaxe. Maybe dig in a bit more organic matter. There's the original soil. It was very, it was very uh, pasty because I think there's machinery here a lot going going up and down. And but it's we get we get it nice. It's more or less north facing. Then we might put a shrub in. Either this one. That's a white one, white hydrangea. Or a dark leaf, pinky red hydrangea, and then put stuff around it. And what we're going to, we have a plant called Lirio, which is like a grass, but it's a lily, it's got a lovely blue flower that likes good organic soil. So, we will, if so, as I say, we're going to have to get this soil really well. About a, that's a half an hour's work. And it's always very important, as I keep saying, when you do the, something like this, when you've made the soil really loose and you've planted, don't walk on it. Let it just do not walk on it because you ruin all your hard work. And we'll bark it over then and we'll, we'll give it the odd water and that's it and it should be good. So we haven't decided what to do, but we know we're going to put Leary up in and perhaps behind we'll put uh, Aconitums, Monk's Hoods. But we, once again, it's a great thing about having a garden centre. We've lots of different plants and we can keep making changes. No, actually, that's this border, that's that border. That would be a nice afternoon's work. And this, this a bit much bigger border here. Bigger piece. We had a big problem here. I planted Lysomacea ciliata firecracker about 10 years ago and it completely took over. So we had to get it all out. Really, really, run, a terrible runner. So we took it all out. And we planted in uh, three, Purple elders, black lace, purple elder. Um, at the end of this video, very end of this video, I'll show you. Great thing, it's great if you know when you plant a plant in your mind's eye what's it going to look like, you know, a few years later. And I, I can show you exactly what I envision for this. We've sort of lighter, it's a lot of lightish green around here. These are white, white hydrangeas. So it'll be be a nice dark. I think it'll, the darkness will contrast. Now what are we going to do in front? We have geranium pile of stemmen. And if you look, some of it's growing in the gravel, which means it's, they're all self-seeded. They were never planted. We're, not, we're going to take all that up. And we're going to plant geranium and falcard, which will have the same flower as this, a little bit smaller, but it's more spready. And it will flower, this will be finished flowering in about two weeks time. The Amphalcard will flower till September, October. So we're going to plant Amphalcard into here. And then we get something herbaceous, you see here. Something, we have herbaceous plants here. We'll put some herbaceous plants here and we'll put some herbaceous plants there. But we're, we're not going to do that until we make sure that every bit of the Lysomacea is gone because the, the, what we want to avoid, and what amateurs, the mistake amateurs make, is they put the new stuff in before all the, the stuff you want to get rid of is gone and then you end up with a dog's dinner and you don't know what to do. So you're always better off making sure that, that the slate is clear, that, that, that the slate is clean, that, that all the stuff you don't want is gone and then it's a doddle. And that's, that's why gardening is very easy then. And that's why. You, I have a two acre garden 
about four hours a week maintenance. No, at the moment about two hours a week maintenance on a four acre, on a two acre garden, which isn't bad. That's because we're, we're very careful what we put in, and if there's weeds are giving trouble, they're out. We're very we're very proactive. We don't let things get out of hand, and then we have very little work. It's, it's the, 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 my motto for gardening is stitching time saves nine. Now what we do is we're going to finish off. We're going to go and look at the purple elder will look like in about two years, maybe three years time. This is what it looks like. This is what the elder looks like in maybe two, three years. Now look how strong those shoots. That's absolutely taken off like a rocket. That's probably, uh, that's probably done uh, two, three feet already. The Americans call these shoots water shoots because they're full of water and they grow very fast. So that's um, what I hope we we'll get over there with, the, with with that elder. Now look at this here, just as I'm here. That nice uh, wedding cake tree, layered tree. I actually don't think it's needed anymore. It's too close to that. You nearly have enough bulk with this here and that bamboo there. You actually don't need this. Or if you did need it, it should be in the middle, but I, I, I would... Uh, I would be inclined to move that somewhere else. That move, that, by the way, they move very easy in the winter time. You can lift that and move it around. It's called wheelbarrow gardening. Now, when we finally came to plant this, we didn't use hydrangeas. We used two fuchsias. Varieties called Army Nurse. Now, I haven't had much success with fuchsias. Uh, other than in pots, and I'm going to try them out in the garden. I'm going to try lots of different varieties out in the garden to see can I get success because they're just different than hydrangeas and different than roses. It'd be just nice to have a, uh, something different. Now we put two fuchsias behind the fuchsias. We put leary up, which is looks like a grass, but it's actually a lily. It's known as the uh, turf lily, and it has nice uh, blue spikes in the autumn. Very good for dry shade. And these are ones which we, we were doing a job at the front. We, they were there five years and they were taken up the digger by the builders and I luckily I managed to rescue them. And they're gonna be here hopefully for a long time to come. We then, we put something silver at the front, a lamium. We just thought it might uh, go well against the fuchsia. And it came from here, over here. There it is. Very nice lamium, it's, I think it's called Beacon Silver, and you can see we took a patch from here. We snuck, a, we snuck a patch from there, and the bits that are left will probably fill in again. And what I like about it, even though it's silvery and it can tend to burn, at the same time the new growth is greener, so there's no burning tendency with the sun. So I think it will be alright even in a bit of sun over there. Well, that was that's the lamium, and then we planted some pulmonarias. That's pulmonaria longifolia, and we contrasted that with some ferns, soft shield fern, which were also re uh, rescued from the builder's uh, digger. And this is hopefully a nice sort of semi-shaded bed. We barked it very quickly afterwards, mini chip bark, and we made sure when we were putting everything in that we dug down well and we broke as many roots as possible from the trees and from the hedging to give the plants a chance to lock in. But once they lock in I think they'll be all right, but now we just have to, I was going to say sit and wait, but gardeners never sit. Uh, we have to wait, see what happens next. Well, by the way, when you when stuff was newly planted, particularly stuff that was uh, not, didn't come from pots, that was split from somewhere else, the uh, roots would have been damaged. It's important to water them regularly, give them a good drop of water until they settle in and then leave them alone. Because you, you shouldn't have to water all the time. If you're watering all the time, it's the wrong plant. But, and this, by the way, is around well water. It's not, it's not the municipal water. So all this stuff that was newly newly planted, we give it a good going over about twice a week for the next month. And then we leave well enough alone.
Plenty of water. Don't skimp on the water. You see, I'm only watering what was planted. I'm not watering anything else. Everything else is on its own. It's like the board, the, the little board, when the parents entice the little board out of the nest for the first time and get it, get it on its, I was going to say on its feet, get it on its wings. And after that, generally the board is on its own. And it's like that with, with our plants. We molly coddle them in the beginning and then they're on their own. That's it.